Lisa from the Homeschool Path to Foreign Language, and I want to talk about a guest post that I did for Homeschool Super Freak on finding time to teach foreign language. And everybody's like, oh, I don't have time to do that. I mean, I know how it is, right? You're a homeschool mom. I mean, I work too, and you know, you're busy, and you're like, I don't need something else added to my plate. I don't want to add so much more time, and how am I gonna do this? And I'm all, oh, right? Well, look, I think you don't have time not to teach a foreign language because it helps everything so much else. It's just this rising tide and it just floats everything up. Everything comes up with it. Everything gets strengthened with it, okay? And you, there's so much other stuff that foreign language covers that you could get some like double credit out of it, okay? So one of the things that I want to challenge is the mindset that we have that we are learning separate subjects. Like when you are studying this one particular thing that you're only studying that one particular thing. It's like when you're studying Spanish, you don't only have to be studying Spanish. There's lots of other things you can study along with it. And I will show you how. For a non foreign language example, I would say like when you study science, you're not like only studying science. I mean, you're also reading, probably writing about it. Um, you know, you might give an oral report on it. So you learn speaking, you learn critical thinking skills. You know, it, everything touches everything else. So just get it gone that like when you're, if your hand is on a pencil and it's moving it around, you're practicing writing. Okay, I don't know to what degree, that depends on some more details, but writing is being practiced if your hand's gripping the pencil and you're making letters, okay, whatever language it's in. Um, so I say, let's take our little box of foreign language and, and let's let it out. Let foreign language come out of the box. It, you can put it with so many other subjects, um, especially like in elementary school, if you've got little kids. Um, you are going to cover like alphabet, seasons, colors, shapes, numbers, months, directions, positions, days of the week, time, families, addresses, neighborhood people, and places. You can do all of that in English and a foreign language at the same time. It doesn't take any extra time. It doesn't. It doesn't take any extra work, except for, unless you can't like picking out the foreign language curriculum or whatever to go with it. Um, but it, it just doing them at the same time. I don't feel like it takes extra work. It's going to take you a little bit of extra work at first to be like, it's changing your mindset. That's the work is changing your mindset to be like, okay, we're reading a Pete the cat book about Pete's lost buttons. And my child wants to sit and count the 21 buttons at the beginning of the book in English and French and Chinese and Spanish. And we're going to be here for 10 weeks. I mean, 10 minutes. It, feel, it feels like 10 weeks in your mind when you're the mom waiting for them to finish counting 400 times. Um, but they like to count over and over and over again. Let them do it in different languages. Why not? Um, you can do all of this, especially when they're little. Even when they're older, though. Um, I mean, I do it in a fun way. Like, I'm learning French along with my kids. I'm not sitting there with a tedious book. Not at first. I'll get to that. But for now, I'm right there with Alain Lele. And I'm singing the songs. And, you know, I learn my numbers and my alphabet and all that stuff with these silly, cute songs. And it was, like, effortless. I mean, I don't even remember learning it. It just sort of happened. And that was the same for my kids, too. And they love it. Um, so you, I mean, gosh, use the fun stuff. Songs, DVDs, CDs, fun picture books, right? Um, free internet videos. You don't have to spend a lot of money on this stuff. I buy some stuff, our favorite stuff, right? I buy some of it. But gosh, I use a lot of free stuff. We live in the internet age. Take advantage of it. You're not stuck in this one little place with like four TV channels anymore. We got it all, right? It's great. You can learn it in, in English and another language at the same time. I mean, 
there are other things with foreign language that have made my life easier too. Um, my children learn how to use a dictionary in Chinese before English, which I find amazing, right? I, don't, I can't even really use a dictionary in Chinese, but somehow my son can do it. I can use a regular dictionary. I could do that, but <laughs> I haven't figured out how to use it in Chinese. I have to ask my son. I think he knows the pinyin or something like that, and then he looks it up. I don't know. But I'm like, you know, I went to cover dictionary skills in our homeschool um, when he was in second grade, and he's like, I already know how to do that, Mom. And he proceeds to show me he does know how to do that, right? And um, <laughs> it's great. But it's something I didn't have to teach. What else did they learn? They learned um, telling time um, better. You know, I had taught them like some basics, but they learn like more, uh, you know, in detail and stuff like that, how to tell time more in Chinese class. Um, and I was going to teach them. We just hadn't kind of, you know, gotten to it yet. Um, just wasn't in our curriculum yet and we just hadn't done it yet. Um, then they learned, uh, so like here is this list of all this other stuff. I made a list of all this other stuff that they learned as the result of studying Chinese that I didn't have to teach them, okay? So it was um, alphabetical order. Like, I mean, they knew the ABCs, but you know, like how to put things in alphabetical order and like how to use alphabetical order. I learned it from Chinese class. Uh, memorization, storytelling, calligraphy, Chinese history, Eastern Hemisphere geography, chess and other games, um, the metric system and measurements in baking. Never would have put that together with Chinese, but they it, it is. Uh, philosophical concepts about how language could affect our thought processes. I don't know when we're gonna get to that in our curriculum, but my kids have already started doing it. So some of those, a couple of those things are stuff that like I had introduced, but it wasn't like it was like a practical need. You know, it's like the difference between like you're studying math and your kids like, when am I ever gonna need algebra in real life? And then you're like, <laughs> so my kids never tell me like, when am I going to need to know how to use a dictionary in real life? Because they know that you have to use a dictionary in real life. Um, so what else? What else? They, um, they, there's other stuff where it's like, because they have these concepts already from studying Chinese, my time covering them in English is much shorter because they just get it because they've done it. Um, so that is like English grammar. I mean, there's just things about English grammar that I just, they just get it better than if they weren't studying a foreign language. And now that we've added French as well, that's another thing that it's like, it's really hitting home for them that like, wow, like I'm understanding why these words go together and that they have to go together in a certain way. And there's like, this order and structure to it that you don't think about it if you only speak one language you know it because you use it but you don't think about it when you study another language your brain thinks about your native language too and it's it helps um handwriting chinese characters improved my son's handwriting a lot spelling math non-american and non-western culture folk tales history study skills, singing and music, the Bible, because the Chinese school my children attend has a one hour Bible class each month, linguistics and linguistic history, making and recording videos, um, story writing, cooking. Um, oh my gosh, they have the cutest French language cooking shows um, on YouTube. There's this one uh, Spanish YouTube channel called Paper Pop and it's so cute. I want my kids to study Spanish so I can watch Paper Pop with them and in this crafting. I just think it's so cute. Um, crafts. I mean, we totally, if I'm doing crafts, I totally try and make it a foreign language craft because I get double credit, right? If I'm doing the craft anyway, give me some double credit and let's practice a little foreign language with it. Holiday time, I'm like, let's do it in two languages. I got to get something special for the holiday anyway. I may as well just, you know, Wrote it in French or Chinese instead of instead of just English. Um, 
I don't go to a co-op and I don't feel bad about it either because my kids go to Chinese class for two hours a week. We don't need a co-op. Don't use one. We tried them. Didn't work out. So I don't go. I don't feel bad about it. And going to Chinese school instead. It's okay. Um, field trips too because we do a lot of like related language related stuff. Um, I also said learning a foreign language replaces some time that would otherwise otherwise be wasted. And what <laughs> our big one for that is my kids like to watch um, like some TV shows and stuff that I was there like twaddle. Um, and so I'm like, okay, you can watch Sophia the first, but it has to be in French. And they totally go for it. And attending a formal foreign language class also provides these opportunities that I would otherwise struggle to provide in a homeschool. Okay, these are things, seriously, as a, in a homeschool, you know, we have to kind of be like, okay, we got to teach you those, those little life skills, right? Like taking tests from an adult who's not mom. They get that in Chinese school. Losing with grace, because they don't win everything in Chinese school, that's for sure. Playing with other kids, because they have a recess at Chinese school. Having classmates. Uh, paying attention in a classroom setting, not with mommy sitting next to you. Um, compassion for other cultures and peoples, right? Like my kids know what it's like to be the different one. Um, you know, to uh, that's important to be empathetic like that and to feel what that feels like. Um, they've attended school shows and they've done public speaking. So, I mean, I could go like into detail on each one of these things and go on and on and on about it. Um, but really, like foreign language, this has just been so valuable for our homeschool and, and enjoyable. And I it just around when we're doing like tests and stuff like that, and I'm trying to help them study and doing their study sheets and stuff, um, then I feel like it's more work. <laughs> I do. I'm totally being honest. I feel like it's a little bit more work then. But all the rest of the time. I don't feel like it's a lot more work. It just adds to our school so much that it's great. And I really hope that it can be great for you and for your kids too, if they're interested in learning a foreign language um, and you can get them into it and dive into it and have all these fun experiences that go along with it.